friends so today is a little bit different of a video now I was originally planning on doing some type of holiday or Christmas look and next week Monday and Wednesday there will be two tutorials coming up because I haven't been able to get around to filming one I've been using a new eye cream and I think it's just been really irritating my eyes so I've been trying to just let my face breathe a little bit which is exactly why I have no makeup on today I'm just really trying to let my skin heal and my eyes heal and just you know just be bare faced for a while. Um, this is a Q&A video, so it's kind of nice because I'm fresh faced, you know, laying everything all out on the line for you guys. So I decided to just film this with no makeup, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, so yeah, about, when was it? My last giveaway video, I don't remember how long ago it was, it's been a while. I asked for you guys, in order to enter that giveaway, you guys had to leave me some questions. Now, I got a ton of questions, so I narrowed it down to a top kind of 20 the questions that I get more frequently asked here on my channel and the ones that you guys seem to frequently ask in that video. Um, so I have a lot of questions here to share with you. Uh, so we're just going to get started and you guys can get to know me a little bit. So question number one says, how did you and your husband meet and how did he propose? We actually met on an online dating website, which I know is so weird, right? Um, my family thought it was really weird as well, um, but we met on one that was specific to our church for the LDS church and um, it was a great way to meet someone I think because we both knew going in that we shared the same values, same beliefs and it just made things a little bit easier um, and he actually knew from the very beginning that like probably the second day of us talking um, that I was the one for him. He had prayed about me and like talked to his family about me and it took me a little bit to realize that, that that I felt the same way about him. It took me a couple months before I was like, okay, this guy's it. I love him. We're meant to be. Um, and how he proposed was kind of silly. I don't know. I had the feeling it was like our five month anniversary. We did the month to month anniversary dates, so the month anniversaries, um, and I think it was our five or six month anniversary. We had only been dating for about six months, I'd like to say. I don't, I don't really know. Um, so it was either the fifth month or the sixth month, and he took me out to dinner. Uh, first we went to the LA Temple, which is a temple for our church, and I thought, you know, I just had a feeling that he was going to propose to me because we had been talking about it for the past, like, month. Um, and I thought he was going to do it there, and he was asking me all kinds of questions about, like, what I want for my future, and how many kids I want, and, you know, how, if him and I were to get married, how would we raise our family, and, you know, what are some traditions that we want him, he just kept asking me all these questions, and I'm like, he's going to propose. And then he just didn't. Like, we just left, and he just didn't, and I was really bummed. I was actually kind of upset about it. I didn't say anything to him, but I was a little bit upset. Like, really? We're talking about getting married. You're saying all this stuff, and then you just don't propose. Um, so we went out to dinner. We went to a macaroni grill, and I remember I had to use the restroom. And I was wearing, I was actually wearing his, um, he had a, like, coat jacket on and it was cold outside so I was wearing his coat and I ended up taking it off for whatever reason um, before I went to the bathroom. I don't know if he had asked me to take it off or he needed something out of it. I don't know. I don't remember but I remember and I ended up taking it off and funny enough he actually had the box with my ring in his coat jacket the entire time I was wearing it which is so funny right? Um, but yeah so he ended up proposing to me as soon as I got back from the bathroom and our waiter ended up giving us our meal for free and we got free dessert and it was just it was so it was so funny because you know I'm I'm someone who's really hard to surprise but he made it a point to you know not propose to me when I was expecting it so that he could kind of surprise me and it was just really fun so that's how he proposed and that's how we met Question number two says, when did you first get into makeup? I first got into makeup probably when I was about nine or ten. My sister, she's five years older than me, and we've never really been, like, super close growing up. I was always jealous of her because she got to do things before I got to do them. And I think, honestly, what really pushed me into, like, loving beauty and makeup was my jealousy. The fact that I couldn't wear it and she could. She was, like, 14 or 15 when she started wearing it and getting all girly. And I've always been a huge girly girl, so I, I even remember, you know, going in my mom's closet and playing dress up and putting on her makeup and her perfume at the age of like five. I've always been a huge girly girl. But honestly, I think what really pushed me into loving makeup and beauty was the fact that I was always so jealous that my sister could wear it and I couldn't. 
Sorry guys if it's loud outside. Um, our neighbors are getting their house worked on, so just excuse the noise. Um, but question number three is what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Um, I started my YouTube channel right after we moved back here from Arizona. So I'm originally from Arizona, but when when I met my husband, he's from California. So I ended up moving out to California, and we lived there for two years. And we just moved here in February of last year. So I've almost been on YouTube a year, which is really exciting. In February, it'll be like my one-year anniversary here on YouTube. But I started my channel because I don't have a lot of friends. And I know that probably sounds weird to some of you guys because a lot of you guys think I'm totally bubbly and outgoing, and I really am. But it's hard for me to open my heart up to people and to let people in. I guess I'm a little bit more standoffish than I'd like to admit. And it's really hard for me to open up and make friends in real life, I guess. So YouTube was kind of an outlet for me to um, meet people who share my similar interests. Now my friends that I do have, a lot of them aren't really into makeup, aren't really into beauty, aren't super girly girls. So I, I just don't really have as much in common with them and that outlet that I have the opportunity to have here on YouTube with meeting people and sharing my same passions and chatting about makeup. So that's the main reason why I started my channel, just so I can make friends and interact with people who share my same interests. Question number four says, what was your wedding like? Flowers, dress, venue, honeymoon, etc. Um, I will leave pictures of my wedding at the end of this video so you guys can kind of see. All the decor we had was kind of DIY projects and so it took about two months to get everything finished and finalized and I worked with my bridal party pretty much the last two weeks non-stop on decor and stuff and I really love how my wedding turned out. I, we still have people to this day who tell us all the time that your wedding was the hit of like the year. It was so much fun. We had a really awesome DJ. Our colors were pink and jade and the jade color was a little bit more of like a turquoise. It wasn't super green. It was more like a blue green and, and we had pink. So we had different shades of like jade and green, um, jade green, turquoise and like pink and light pink and hot pink in our wedding party and, and as our decor. So just those two colors just were, were beautiful together. Um, and then we had a DJ who had a, this whole huge light set up. So actually on our dance floor, the whole dance floor was lit up pink and, and changed different, different shades of pink. Uh, it was just so, so beautiful. Um, I did, didn't have as much family come out as I would have liked because we had our wedding in California. Um, and we got married in my husband's backyard in the house that he grew up in. And the backyard was really, really beautiful. They had, you know, super green and it just, it was so pretty. Like I said, I'll leave pictures at the end of this video, so make sure to stay tuned for that. My dress... I actually got online. Now, because I'm LDS, because I'm a Mormon, we we pride ourselves in being very modest. So my dress had to have sleeves. And I went to David's Bridal, I went to a couple other boutiques, and they just didn't have anything, you know, I'm a plus size girl, so they just didn't have anything that fit me very well, that was flattering on me, and that was also modest with the with the sleeves. So I ended up purchasing my dress online, and it ended, only cost me about $250. And I was lucky enough to have a woman from my church do all of my alterations for free. So I paid a total of like $250 um, for my dress. And it was just absolutely beautiful. I wouldn't have traded it for the world. I loved it. Um, I'll, leave, I'll leave pictures of my dress as well at the end of this video. Um, and pictures of me in the dress with my husband so you guys can see what, what I look like. My makeup I did myself. Um, the only thing I guess I would have done differently is maybe a little bit bolder of a lip. I did more of kind of a neutral pink lip. And now looking back, I wish I would have gone a little bit more with a hot pink lip because it's kind of a signature color for me. Um, but other than that, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. And our wedding was beautiful. Our honeymoon, we went to San Diego, California, and we went to SeaWorld. And then we also went to Knott's Berry Farm. His grandma worked for Disney for like 30-something years. So she gets a bunch of discounts on all of the, the parks in California. So we ended up doing that and then um, when we were in San Diego we actually we actually went to this place where they had the world's like it was actually documented or something I don't know I don't know how but it said that they had the world's best um, pizza and their like world famous pizza was a carrot and broccoli pizza which sounds so weird and gross 
but it was delicious. Um, so we're actually planning on going back maybe at the end of this year or like in 2015 um, just to revisit that place because it's just magical. It was in downtown San Diego and uh, we went to a bunch of different little shops down there and it was just so much fun. We went to a couple of different beaches. We got married on Memorial Day weekend so everything was super crowded so a lot of times we just just stayed in our hotel and just enjoyed each other's company watched movies ate really good food and um yeah it was just a blast you know i if i could go back and relive my wedding day and my honeymoon i totally would because it was it was just the best day ever and the best weekend ever so yeah that was my whole wedding extravaganza and you know like i said i'll leave pictures at the end of this video Question number five is what is your favorite food? I'm really not a picky person. I enjoy all different types of food. And one thing when I married my husband, he's very into trying new different types of ethnic foods. So we've tried like Indian, Greek, Italian, I mean, well obviously Italian because I love pasta, but we've tried like a bunch of different stuff. Seafood, sushi, Japanese, Thai food. I've just, I've tried it all. It's, I just love food in general. Um, but I think if we're talking like favorite food, if we're talking dessert, it's cheesecake. Like, I could eat cheesecake all day, every day. It's delicious. I love it. That's probably my favorite food. Question number six is, do you want children? And if so, how many? Yes, we want children. And growing up, I was never really close with my siblings, and my husband was never really close with his siblings. Um, we're still, we still kind of struggle having relationships with our siblings. It's just something that him and I both have always struggled with. And I come from a really big family. I come from a family of 12 kids, and so I kind of want a bigger family, but not quite as big. So him and I have talked about having like five or six kids, at the most probably six, but at the least probably four. Um, yeah, that was something that was like a big deal for us, was to have children right around the same age, so that when they grow up, they're friends, they, you know, they get along and they're, they're like best friends, because that's something that him and I have never had within our own families. Um, so, so yeah, definitely, we want children. Question number seven says, what is your go-to eye makeup look? Now, I don't really have one because I, I mean, if you guys watch my tutorials and you watch my videos, you know I like to play with my different makeup looks. Um, I don't like to recreate the same thing over and over again. Uh, so, I don't really have one, but I guess if I had to, it would be something with gold because I just love gold eyeshadow. And I feel like gold is a neutral, kind of a neutral shade, but it also has that sparkly color, pop of color to it. So I guess I'd do some type of like neutral gold smoky eye. That would probably be like my go-to makeup look if I had to have one on a regular basis. That's probably what I would pick. Question number eight says, what are your favorite makeup brands, drugstore, and high-end? I guess if we're talking drugstore, it's changed over the last couple months. I think my favorite now and currently is Wet n Wild. I really love their eyeshadows. I think out of any of the other drugstore brands, they have the best quality eyeshadows for their price point. Um, and then they have the most amazing lipsticks, you know, they have their matte lipsticks, which are always great to wear. And then my actual favorite lipsticks from the drugstore are the Wet n Wild Fergie lipsticks. I absolutely love them. Um, they're super, super creamy, but not creamy to the point where they slip off the lips. They last a long time and their formulas are just great. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I love Wet n Wild blushes. They're a little bit too pigmented, but you know, if you blend them out nicely and you have a light hand with them, they look really beautiful on the cheeks. So, so yeah, I'd have to go with Wet n Wild for drugstore. And then for high end, that's a little bit hard because, you know, I love all high end makeup brands. Um, but I think at the current moment, Bobbi Brown is probably my favorite. I really love Bobbi, Bobbi Brown skincare products as well. So, yeah, I'd probably have to go with Bobbi Brown. And then if we're talking luxury, it's got to be a toss-up between Tom Ford and Guerlain products. Question number nine says, who are your top five favorite YouTubers? Now, I don't really want to answer this question because I feel like if I were to pick a top five, I'd be leaving out a ton of my friends, and I just don't want to do that. Um, I think you guys are asking me based on, like, famous YouTubers, and in all honesty, I do not watch any famous YouTubers. I'm not on this platform to be fangirl, a fangirl or like a stalker of famous YouTubers, um, so I just don't watch them. I watch people that I've become friends with. Um, if I subscribe to your channel, it's because I enjoy your content and because I want to be your friend, not for any other reason. So I don't, I don't have a top favorite. 
So question number 10 says, what are some of your other hobbies outside of YouTube? Now I think for most most of you who follow my channel in any length of time, you know that I like I like art. I've always been a big art geek or art junkie. Um, and I'm really into painting, so a lot of times when I have some downtime, I'll just really enjoy pulling out some canvases or my sketchbook and painting or drawing. So those, that's one thing that I really enjoy doing. And then a second thing that I don't think I've ever mentioned here on my channel or most of you probably don't know about me is that I like to go antique shopping um, downtown Glendale which is a city here in Arizona they have like a whole three four block radius of a bunch of antique shops and sometimes me and my husband like to go to go look and at antique shops for like a day date we'll go to lunch and then we'll go to like an, all the antique shops down there and it's just so much fun to me to see um, some some of them have little place little places like antique toy shops so when we go in there's toys that that are in there that I used to play with when I was a kid and then they also have like older toys from older generations you know older than me um, and it's just so much fun to me uh, I'm kind of into collecting antiques kind of stuff so so yeah that's one thing I really also enjoy doing so question number 11 says what makeup product can you not live without and this is funny because I was just talking with a friend from Instagram about this um, now when I don't wear some type of foundation or BB or CC cream and I go outside of my house and I'm in the uh, public environment um, if I'm not wearing that, I tend to break out a lot more, which is just a funny concept, but it's so true. Uh, I feel like having foundation or a BB or CC cream just gives your skin an added protection barrier between your skin and the outside environment. I was also watching um, Sarah from Not Your Typical Doll Faces. Uh, I was watching her top five foundation picks. We actually did a collaboration. I'll link both our videos down below if you haven't checked those out. But she had mentioned the same thing. She'd recently moved to UK and she was talking about how, you know, the environment and the weather and, and the climate and things are different and so the air's not, she's not used to the air where she lives and stuff and so um, just, just being in that environment, if she doesn't have something protecting her skin, she tends to break out more. And I was just like, you know, I have that same problem. So for me, something that I feel like I can't live without outside of my house, outside of, you know, my own little personal bubble, is some type of um, facial product, whether it's BB cream, CC cream, foundation. I, I pretty much always have to have some type of protective barrier when I leave the house because otherwise I break out horribly. Leave me some comments down below if you guys struggle with that too because I just think it's a really weird concept. Question number 12 says, how do you stay so positive? Now I got asked this question quite a bit. Um, I have my off days just like everyone does where, you know, I'm, I feel very negative or I'm very down on myself or, you know, just things happen and I have a bad day. Um, but one way that I keep myself from letting those things affect me is I always start my day off with some type of prayer. And usually it's a, just a thankful prayer. Um, and I ask, I ask the Lord to bless me with, you know, happiness, bless me with staying positive and not focusing on the negative things of life. And if things are going on that are out of my control, help me to understand that. Um, as you guys know, I've been dealing with a lot of health problems and lately that has been really, really helping me stay positive is just starting my morning every morning, asking for the help and strength to get through the day and um, to to keep a positive attitude about things and it really really does help. Question number 13 says what is your dream destination for a vacation? Um, somewhere probably in Europe, Italy, Greece, Rome, places like that, Paris, um, places that have a lot of art history to them. I'm really big into art history and I love to go visit like the chap different chapels and churches, go see all the different statues. Um, I would just I would just love that. I'm a huge huge art person so yeah, any places that have really awesome art history is where I'd want to go. Question number 14 says, what five makeup products would you recommend to beginners trying to build a collection? That is a fantastic question and has given me an idea to do a video. So you give me a topic to make a video on. So I'm not going to actually answer this here. I'm going to do a whole separate video probably sometime in January off this, this exact question. So stay tuned for that. 
Um, and then question 16 says, how do you date, how do you stay confident being a plus size woman? That's an awesome question. Um, I have been plus size my entire life. I've dealt with insecurities about it, about being plus size my entire life. Um, ever since I can remember, I was always bigger than everyone else in school, taller, not necessarily fat or, or overweight when I was younger, but I was always just bigger, if that makes sense. Um, and then recently, in the last year or two, I've put on quite a bit of weight because of my thyroid. I've mentioned it a few times here on my channel that I do have a thyroid condition. And so in my particular case, a lot of the reason why I'm overweight is something that I can't necessarily control. And so for me, it's been a little bit easier to accept that. It's taken me a while to get to a point where I can accept accept that and love my body for what it is. It's my body. So you know what? It's gotten me through life so far, and I need to love it. Um, I think the best way to get to a point where you can be positive about yourself and, and your body image is when you can look in the mirror and say, I love that person staring back at me. Regardless of all the flaws I have, I love that person because that's who I am and I know who I am and I love you for it. Um, that's another thing that I just want to mention real quick is that you have to know who you are. I think a lot of us sometimes are so lost and we don't know who we are. We don't know what we want out of life. and. I think that's another thing that helps me deal with the fact that I am overweight is that, you know, regardless of, of my weight and my problem being overweight, is that I know who I am, I know what I want out of life, and, um, and you know, I'm not going to let my weight keep me from that. So I think that's one thing too, which is just, just to look at it as a more positive, from a more positive perspective. And if your weight is something that you can control, um, you know, in my case, part of it is I can't really control but if it is something that you can control and it's something that you really dislike about yourself then only you have the power to change that um, and if you're in a situation like I am you need to just learn to accept the fact that your life is the way it is and you need to do what you can to keep your body as healthy as you can um, and that's 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 what I'm doing. I'm, I'm trying to keep my body the best um, the best that I can and in the best health that I can and I'm hoping that eventually the medicine and stuff that I'm taking will kick in and will help me start to lose a little bit of weight. But the best way honestly is to just love yourself for who you are and look at yourself in the mirror and say, I love this person. I think I actually skipped 15, so we're going to go back to that. Um, question number 15 is, what is your favorite red lip color of all time? Now, this is probably going to change, but this is my current favorite red shade. Um, and it's a more, like, darker, darker red, but it is the Lime Crime Velveteen's um, Wicked. So this is what it looks like. I'll do a swatch on my hand so you guys can see. I've worn this numerous times, and you guys know how much I love it. Um, this is actually... It's more of a like red berry, so it's not a true bright red, but this is my favorite currently and I love it. Okay, so moving on to question number 17. Question number 17 is what is your favorite perfume? I've been asked this so many, so many times and I don't necessarily have a top all-time favorite, but currently this is probably my favorite perfume. This is a Tory Burch signature perfume. You guys have heard me talk about this numerous times on my channel. Right now, this is my absolute favorite. It's kind of a warm, let me see, I have to open it up because I have to smell it, but it's kind of a warm, clean, refreshing scent is the best way I can describe it. Um, I'll leave the notes that are in this down in that description box below, um, so if you guys are interested in, in kind of more about what this scent smells like, I'll leave those notes down there, but I just, it's my favorite. I love it. So question 18 says, what is your best childhood memory? I don't necessarily have one in particular. It's just kind of an overall thing that we did. Um, in our church, we have something that's called Family Home Evening, which is one day out of the week dedicated to spending time with your family. And usually how we do, how we would do it anyway is we would have one week we would have dedicated towards like a lesson planned, um, like a gospel-related gospel lesson. And then the next week we would have some type of really fun activity where we would go out and play, you know, play like volleyball, go to the park, we'd have like a family picnic, we would go see a, a movie, um, just, we'd have like a family game night, just something along those lines where we'd have a good, wholesome family entertainment. And those are my best memories because we spent time as a family and, um, 
growing up, like I said, I was never really super close with my siblings, but looking back, those were the times that I honestly can say that I got to know them and I had a better bond because we spent time together as a family, interacting, getting to know each other, and it was so much fun. Um, we kind of stopped doing that after my siblings all moved out. I was about the age of 12 when we stopped doing that. All of my siblings moved out, got married, had families of their own, and I kind of wish that my family, my parents, and I would have still kept on that tradition because it was just so much fun. Um, but that's something definitely that we are going to be doing with our family. My husband and I try to make it a point to do it just for him and I where we have like you know, one week where we have a lesson and then the next week we have a date night or like a day date where we go out. Um, so we're starting to incorporate that into our own life and I can't wait for us to have kids so that we can we can do that with them as well. But those are my best childhood memories, just spending time, wholesome, good entertainment and time with my family. Question 19 says, if you could choose any celebrity to do, to do makeup on, who would it be? Now this is a little bit hard for me to narrow it down, but I think if I was to do makeup on one person who was a celebrity, I would choose Taylor Swift. I love the type of person that she is, and regardless of her being, her, her outer beauty just being so, so beautiful, and just, she's just gorgeous, um, I love what she stands for. I love that she is very empowering to young girls and to women, and I love that she's so interactive with her fans, that she makes it a point to to appreciate her fans. Um, and if I could somehow be a part of that, even if it is through makeup, that would just be like a dream come true for me. Question number 20 says, what do you like most about making videos and what do you like the least? What I like most about making videos is interacting with you guys. You know, I, I talked about why I started my channel was to make friends on this platform and I really do feel like you guys as my subscribers are my friends. Not only have I met some really amazing other YouTubers, but I've made some really amazing friendships through my subscribers as well and that for me is the best part about making videos. And I just, I love it. And I think the least, my least favorite thing about making videos, I don't know, um, probably the negativity obviously is something that, you know, we all as YouTubers struggle with. I, I actually don't struggle with it so much. I've been blessed to not have to be a part of so much drama. But I guess the one thing about making videos or having a YouTube channel in general that's kind of been a little bit hard on me is being bullied by other YouTubers. Um, by the ones who have a little bit more subscribers who, or who are a little bit more well established with their channel or whatever the case may be. Um, I've dealt with some bullies here on YouTube and for me that's been the most negative part of making videos. I just don't understand, you know, we all started from the very bottom. I mean, regardless of how many subscribers you have now, you were at that same point that I was at. So I don't understand what makes you better than, better than me or better than anyone else. You're not better than anyone else just based on your subscribers alone. I, I just, I've never understood why um, why some other YouTubers can be so hateful and, and bully bully people. It's just not nice and that's probably the one thing that I dislike about the YouTube community as a whole. Okay guys, so that is it for my Q&A video. I hope you guys enjoyed this and you got to le learn a little bit more about me. Um, now I know I didn't get around to all of the questions. I may end up doing a second Q&A video. I haven't decided yet, but we'll see. Um, so I don't have a quote for today. I just wanted to talk about this Christmas season, kind of what it means to me. Now first and foremost, I love what Christmas stands for. I love what Christmas is all about. Our Savior Jesus Christ being born. I love seeing people celebrate it by having nativities on their lawns and, and you know putting up Christmas lights and stuff. I love the songs. I love the music about him being born. I just, that's probably one of my favorite parts honestly is the music. Um, I love the lights. This year, um, we actually got to go to Glendale Glitters. Last weekend, me and my husband got to go to Glendale Glitters. Now, I did talk about downtown Glendale a little bit, but every year they put on this, like, show. Well, it's not really a show, but they have, like, they celebrate, celebrate basically, like, this season by putting up, they have over 1 million lights. They have, like, a, a trolley going around that you can take and tour the, the downtown city. They have like a horse and buggy carriage that's really, really cool. Um, they always have really great food. They have all their little cafes open and all the antique shops get like all decorated. And it was just so much fun to go. Every year growing up, me and my mom went and it was like a tradition. 
we would go and we'd tour the shops and we'd look at the lights and we would take the, the, the trolley and just tour the city and we went every single year and so this year it was so nice to be able to take my husband there for the first time. He really, really enjoyed it and um, it was just such a great experience. So I have been just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this season. I hope you guys have too. Um, I hope you guys are having just a beautiful, beautiful Christmas holiday. Um, I, I just can't wait for Christmas. So. That's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Love you guys.